Hi, in this lesson, we'll look at an important feature of CSS known as the box model. Imagine you need to fill your room with pictures. There's a lot of spacing to consider. You need to consider the width and height of the actual content, the width and height of the padding between the picture or content and the frame. This might be a mat placed in the frame between the picture and the frame to provide some spacing. The width and height and color and style of the border of the frame. Then, if you're hanging multiple pictures on the wall, you need to consider the width and height of the margins, the space between each of the picture frames. Well, developing a web page is very similar. So introducing the box model. The box model is a CSS tool that allows us to space out elements on the page. There is a box wrapped around every element that consists of a margin, border, padding, and the actual content. Here's what the CSS box model looks like. The blue represents our actual content. The green represents the padding, or from our earlier example, the mat around the picture. The border is represented by the yellow, which was the picture frame in our earlier example. Then finally, the orange area is represented, um, represents the margin spacing. Um, in this example, all of the values and measurements are pixel units. The first number represents the width of the actual content. So the width in this case is 20. The second number represents the height of the actual content. We can also specify the padding distance of each side of the content. Each padding side can be identified by the element's style property. In this case, the padding top property has a value of 5 pixels. Padding right also has a value of 5 pixels, as does padding bottom and padding left. Similar to the padding style property, we can set different values for the width of the border. In this example, the border is 10 pixels wide on each side. Border top, border right, border bottom, and border left. The margin style property has a width of 20 pixels on all four sides in this example. Shown here, we have a margin top, a margin right, a margin bottom, and a margin left, just like the others. Finally, we can change the style of the border using the border style property. Let's take a look at the values defined in this div tag CSS style rule. It defines the width and height of the div tag contents. These properties can define the padding width for each side in pixels. Rather than listing each side of the padding, there is a shortcut we can use to define them. Using the padding property, you can list the values for each side. The values are always listed in the order of top, right, bottom, and then left. One good way to remember these is that you start at the top and move clockwise around the box. Now let's add a CSS border property to the div element of our website. We'll define a border property with a width of 3 pixels. One thing to note, if only one value is provided for the padding, margin, or border properties, then all four sides will have the same value. In this example, the border will have a width of 3 pixels on all four sides. Our border won't yet appear on the web page though because we have not defined a style. So let's add that in a color. We've defined the border style as solid in a green color. Now there's also a shortcut for our border. Instead of listing these on three lines, we can list these on one line. So we define the border with a property value and list the width, style, and color in that order. The border's color can be any color um, but the style has a certain set types of style that you can use. So solid, dotted, dashed, double, groove, and none are typical examples that we'll see. You can find a full list on the W3Schools website. To finish our styling of the div tag in our CSS style rule, 
we'll add a margin property and list the width for each side, top, right, bottom, and left. So a quick note about defining styles in CSS and units of measurement. A pixel is an absolute unit of measurement. You can use PX units when defining padding, margins, and CSS. You can also use relative units of measurement. These are units that rely on the measurement of other elements. For example, the EM unit of measurement is relative to the font size of that element. That means a measurement of a 2EM is two times the size of the current font. Now let's take a look at some examples in the editor. Okay, so let's check this out in practice. Now one thing we're going to notice, we're going to take a look at this quick facts section. So if you look, that's our featured class. And so we're going to kind of play around with that one a little bit. If we come over to our style sheet, we see this featured class here. Once we have a border of seven pixels, and that represents the width of this border here. So if we change that from seven to say 25, we're going to notice that that gets thicker. Okay, let's go back down, keep it pretty small for what we're going to be looking at here. So we'll go back down to five, make that a little bit thinner. Now again, we have um, our margin, which is the space between that object and the other object. So if I switch this around from 30 down to say five pixels, we're going to notice that this box moves much closer to the other objects. Okay, and I can change it to having, from having one number to having multiple numbers. So let's say I want to have more space on the top and the bottom, but not as much on the sides. So I can do five pixels for the top, and I'm going to actually change that to, let's say, 15. And then I'm going to do five pixels on the right. Then the next one is the bottom, so 15 pixels. And then finally the left at five pixels. So now you should notice when I refresh this, I get more space on the top and the bottom, but the same space on the left and the right. And if I want to have even more on top, I can change that to say 35, and it moves that box down a little bit. Okay, our padding, remember, is kind of the space on the inside here. So it's the space between our content and our frame on the inside. So right now it's 15. If I, again, change that down to five, I'm gonna bring everything a little bit closer to that edge. Okay, and again, I can change this and say, okay, maybe I wanna have more padding on the right and the left, but less padding on the top and the bottom. And so I'm gonna do five pixels on the top. I'll change this to say 15 pixels on the left, or on the right, then five pixels on the bottom, and 15 pixels on the left. And I refresh that, and you'll notice that it moves in a little bit from there. And again, I can change this to make it a little bit more dramatic. Change that to 35, and um, I see that that moves in just a little bit more um, from my, my content. Um, and so that's really how I can adjust each thing individually. Um, now one thing to remember though is that this has a box model around it, and so does this. This has a box model here. And as I think about things like margins, those are going to play off of each other because each one has a different box and a different margin around it. Okay, so go ahead and play around with these on your own.